this is Calimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back! Or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. As you've probably seen from the title of this video, I am creating my own version of Miraculous Ladybug that isn't concerned about being kid-friendly for the older audiences who do enjoy MLB and magical girl stories in general. I've been wanting to do this idea for a long time, even before I started doing YouTube, because I love magical girls and I love animals. I actually wanted to be a vet when I was younger. So before we get into it, I want to clarify what I mean when I say this is a mature version of Miraculous. First of all, it is not me taking the current cast of characters and aging them up. Nor is it me taking Miraculous Ladybug as it is and writing a darker, more mature story for it. It is also not an alternate universe where I write the characters the way I think would improve upon their portrayals like I am currently doing with my redesign rewrite series. Nor a what if for characters taking on different roles like the Scarlet Lady AU by Zoe Onesama on Tumblr, though it is definitely an excellent story you should definitely check out if you haven't already. What this is, is a completely original story utilizing Miraculous Ladybug's animal-themed magical girl concept that centers around a cast of characters in their mid-twenties and magical accessories inhabited by immortal power-giving creatures that turn you into superheroes based on animals. Which is arguably the main draw for the show, though it is worth noting that even the best part of Miraculous Ladybug isn't an original concept. Tokyo Mew Mew did it first and they did it way better. So if what you want is Miraculous Ladybug that's still bright, happy, and child-friendly with a dorky tween protagonist without creepy stalker tendencies who actually has a healthy relationship with her love interest, and the story doesn't involve any character assassination and melodramatic love squares, just watch Tokyo Mew Mew. Seriously, there's a reboot of it coming out this year, but I would highly, highly recommend you guys watch the original first because I'm biased and I will always prefer the old school animation because if you like Miraculous Ladybug, you'll love Tokyo Mew Mew. But if what you're looking for is a story where the magical girls are adults and therefore have to juggle adult responsibilities, then this video is for you. Many magical girl stories tend to focus on underage characters, so having an older cast would allow me to explore conflicts you normally wouldn't see, like disillusionment and aimlessness because life didn't exactly turn out the way you thought it would when you were younger. If you guys have followed my channel for a while, you might know that I actually attempted to do a rewrite of Yandere Simulator before I started doing Miraculous Ladybug content. My biggest takeaway from doing that is that it's very hard for me personally to take full creative liberty and write a story I want to write with pre-existing rules and story structures in place. For example, if I were to change absolutely everything about Marinette, including her name, backstory, her hobbies and aspirations, would she still be the same character or would I be better off making an entirely new character? Perhaps the role that a character like Marinette fulfills isn't a role I want to use in my story, and perhaps there are things about the Kwamis and Miraculouses I want to change without necessarily overriding the original concept. The point is, I don't necessarily want to make a character just to uphold the same old status quo of the original when I could be making something I think would be more interesting. So think of this story as more of a parallel universe or a spin-off. In this video, I will be explaining some of the lore and key differences between the original Miraculous Powers and my spin-off, which I have decided to call Wild Word. My best friend actually came up with this title and he also helped me construct the storyline and characters because he is an amazing writer. But before I get into this video, I want to say thank you for Sensei Labs for sending me their pen tablet medium bundle SE to review. I've been using it for about a couple of weeks now and I can honestly say it offers a lot for a digitizer tablet and definitely gets the job done. If you're looking for a new drawing tool and are wondering what I'm using to make the illustrations in this video, it is this tablet with Clip Studio Paint. As I've previously said, this tablet is your classic digitizer tablet. I've been considering going back to digitizer tablets because I have a shoulder problem that kind of makes it hard for me to hold my arm at an elevated position, which is often the case for monitor tablets, and it gets uncomfortable after a while. Plus, there are also issues like monitor calibration and pen tip offset where the pen and cursor doesn't sync up, and if you have a small desk like I do, space issues. 
Like most digital artists, I started off using a digitizer tablet, so using this tablet was very familiar and intuitive for me. Because it lays flat on the desk, it also helps mitigate my shoulder problem. But one of my favorite things about this tablet is that it is completely wireless, which means I don't have to worry about any pesky cables cluttering my desk. All you have to do is plug in this Bluetooth USB and it instantly syncs up with the tablet and its quick keys. This quick key is one of the features that make this tablet really stand apart from other tablets. It's basically a remote-like device you can program with your favorite shortcuts and a wheel for zooming, scrolling, or even changing brush sizes. It's super innovative because it has an OLED display that you can customize to tell you exactly what each button does, and the wheel has LED lights you can customize to remind you which function you're currently on, which is great for someone like me who has the memory of a goldfish. The Quickie has 40 programmable functions per application and comes with 4 different trays you can switch between for different functions on different apps. All in all, I do think this is a gorgeous tablet and a good alternative to monitor tablets and a solid choice for beginner artists who are just starting out because it's much more affordable and comes with way more features than the average digitizer tablet. The bundle also comes with two pens, both with 8192 levels of pressure you can alternate from depending on your needs as well as replacement pen nibs. And the pen sensitivity is easily adjustable. Use code CALIMARASEN to get up to 15% off if you're interested in getting one for yourself or someone you know. So now, let me take you through the world of Wild Word. In this world exists eight legendary artifacts known as the Aegis, which are magical accessories inhabited by mythical beings called Sentinels. The Sentinels are capable of bestowing those in possession of the Aegis with supernatural abilities. As such, they were once revered as gods by early humans, who believed that the Sentinels are the embodiment of survival and instinct in all living beings. However, sentinels lack a physical form, hence they require agents to perform their will in the physical world. They perceived humans as the most malleable and versatile of all of Earth's creatures, and thus it was decided that they would share their power with them. Each sentinel embedded themselves into precious gemstones so that they can be worn by specially selected humans that the sentinel deemed worthy of their power. These artifacts were scattered across the world, utilized by various people throughout history to become heroes or monsters. However, as time went on, more and more people sought the power of the Aegis, wanting to claim it for themselves, leading to war, invasion, and mass destruction. The world was being engulfed by chaos, and to maintain order, one of the sentinels and his wielder decided that the world would be safer without the Aegis in it. And so, he spent his life collecting the Aegis from all corners of the world, stealing them away from warlords and paragons, and sealing them in an enchanted spellbook in which he documented his knowledge of the Sentinels, to serve as a guide for what to do should the Aegis ever resurface again. He hid the Aegis and his spellbook in a concealed crypt and spent the remainder of his days as the first and last keeper of the Aegis. In his final moments, he relinquished ownership of his own Aegis and the Sentinel of Harmony and enshrined himself in the crypt with the Aegis Spellbook, where he will continue to watch over them. The Aegis and their stories were soon forgotten and lost to time. You've probably figured out at this point that the Aegis are substitutes for the Miraculous and the Sentinels are substitutes for the Kwamis, but there are greater differences than just the name. Unlike the Kwamis, Sentinels are not capable of speech. They are wild beings that are far more akin to the animals they have taken the form of. They do not possess the same concept of right or wrong as humans, and they bow to no authority. Not even their own wielders. Except for one. The one who holds the Keeper's Spellbook holds compulsion over all the Sentinels. Otherwise, a wielder's relationship to their Sentinel is a partnership of mutual trust and respect. Because of this, they are capable of rejecting their wielders if they deem them unfitting of their virtue. These virtues include freedom, wonder, emotion, thought, protection, strength, change, and harmony. If the wielder embodies their sentinel's virtue, then they will be chosen as a vessel, 
even if the wielder intends to use their powers for evil purposes in the perception of human morality. The sentinels primarily reside inside of their aegis until they are called upon by their wielder, at which point they will leave their aegis and possess the wielder as their new vessel, granting them power. When they manifest outside of their aegis, often to act as a guide to their wielders, the sentinels take on the form of the first creature that first displayed their virtue. These creatures include a hawk, a raven, a songbird, a snake, a wolf, a cat, a tiger, and a stag. Because of this, their wielders will develop some semblances of these animals in their transformed states, such as wings, claws, and fangs. Aegis wielders also become more in tune with their survival instincts, gaining superhuman reflexes, stamina, speed, strength, sight, vision, and smell. Similar to the Miraculous, their transformed appearance follows the user's preferences. However, Aegis weapons are based on the individual wielder's strengths and skills, allowing users of the same Aegis to wield different weapons as well as a sub-weapon. This transformed state acts as an armor, giving them invincibility over normal weapons, increasing their physical durability, and suppressing their pain perception, allowing them to survive fatal injuries and fight on even with broken bones. Only Aegis wielders are capable of injuring other Aegis wielders. Each Aegis has a limit to the amount of damage their transformed states can sustain, some being higher than others, and if the sustained damage remains within these limits, all injuries disappear once the wielder detransforms. However, if this limit is breached, the injuries they sustained may transfer to their normal bodies when they detransform. Fun fact about the Miraculous is, the reason that their holders have a time limit after using their special superpower is because they're still minors. This is why Hawk Moth is able to use his powers multiple times an episode without detransforming. However, as long as their superpower isn't used, they are able to remain transformed indefinitely. Which is kind of overpowered, especially when the cast get older and no longer have to worry about the time limit. But this isn't the same case for the Aegis. See, the Aegis function by tapping into its wielder's energy. Hence, the wielder's bodies are forced to increase metabolism and produce more energy to keep up with the demand, kinda like aerobic exercise. So the longer they remain transformed, the further their bodies are pushed to exhaustion and how long they are able to remain transformed depends solely on the physical fitness of the user. Because of this, the Aegis wielders must also train their normal bodies building fitness and endurance to remain transformed for longer. When transformed, their Aegis has the power to make it so that it would be impossible for someone to recognize their wielder, even with the assistance of psychic powers or DNA sampling. Of course, similar to Miraculous Ladybug, and because it's fun, each Aegis also has an activation and deactivation phrase, and a special power to go with each Aegis. Those are the common features shared by all Aegis, but you're probably curious about the unique traits of each Aegis and Sentinel and what makes them different from each other. Think of it as a read-through of the Aegis spellbook. Let's start with the Songbird Aegis. This Aegis is a rainbow opal embedded into a hair comb. It is inhabited by Ren, the Sentinel of Emotion. He is represented by the Songbird creatures known for their heartfelt songs that are capable of effortlessly swaying the emotions of any living creature, inducing sorrow, joy, hope, or alarm. They sing to attract others to them and fill their environment with life. After all, it is said that the experience of emotion is how one can truly be alive. To express emotion and invoke them in others is the power of the songbird Aegis. Thus, it is no wonder that those chosen as Ren's vessels are those in the arts who evoke emotion through their craft, such as artists, writers, musicians, and actors, creative spirits who are highly in tune with their feelings and the feelings of others and wish to share those emotions with the world. However, this has not always resulted in a noble outcome. Some have used this aegis to spread dangerous feelings and ideas that have resulted in discord within communities and causing disunity that persisted for generations. The Songbird Aegis grants its wielders the power of Siren Song, 
which is a vocal compulsion that fills those within hearing range with powerful emotions, be it crippling sadness, strong determination, burning anger, or sluggish laziness. It functions as both a support for their allies and an obstacle for opponents. However, the wielder must genuinely feel those emotions for the power to work, and the effect only lasts for as long as the wielder's performance lasts. If they stop or are interrupted, the effects of the power immediately disappear. Oftentimes, Songbird Aegis wielders will also have keen hearing if they are musicians, heightened perception if they are artists, greater empathy if they are writers, and higher charisma if they are actors. In their transformed state, Songbird Aegis wielders will also sport wings, gain perfect pitch, and the ability to sing in any language. To activate the Songbird Aegis, one must use the phrase crescendo, and to deactivate, morendo. Next, we have the Hawk Aegis. It is a fire opal embedded in a bracelet that is inhabited by Bedea, the Freedom Sentinel. His name was inspired by the minor Loa Bedesi, who holds the domain of the sky in voodoo. He embodies every living creature's desire for self-determination and the power to act without any hindrance or restraint. He is represented by the Hawk, a creature championed as a symbol of freedom inspiring hope whenever it soars through the skies. The hawk are magnificent birds of prey known for its flight prowess and fearlessness, preying on not only small mammals and birds, but venomous reptiles. Wielders of the hawk aegis are self-assured and strong-willed. They live in the moment and follow where the wind blows. But most of all, they value their autonomy and can't stand being tethered or bound. For many of them, this extends to others as well as themselves. Thus, many of the wielders in history were some form of freedom fighter or rebel against the prevailing authority at the time. This freedom doesn't necessarily have to be physical. The wielders of the Hawk Aegis often champion freedom in all its forms. However, this focus on freedom has a cost. Some of the Aegis wielders have taken their ideas of freedom too far often sowing the seeds of anarchy and chaos in their wake. Thus, the Hawk Aegis grants its wielders a power called Changing Winds, which allows the wielder to will an event into reality. However, the wielder must be able to picture the event clearly in their minds and it must affect them directly as it manifests as strokes of luck to aid the wielder in action. As passive abilities, the Hawk Aegis also grants its wielders the gift of speed and flight, in fact, Hawk Aegis wielders are the most proficient flyers as they possess increased durability against high gravity, immunity from whiplash, and may even reach Mach speeds in their flight course. Its wielders may also develop hawk-like traits such as keen eyesight, sharp talons, brown feathers, and wings. To activate the Hawk Aegis, its wielders must say the phrase, to the heavens, and to deactivate, they must say, down to earth. And now we have the Raven Aegis. It is a black opal embedded into a feather earring. This Aegis is inhabited by Hugin, the Sentinel of Thought. He is the embodiment of every living creature's ability to process information, analyze, and problem solve. His name was inspired by one of Odin's ravens, whose job it was to fly all over Midgard and bring him information. So it was only right that Hugin is represented by the Raven, an intelligent creature capable of problem solving, recognizing and remembering faces, planning, and using tools. Vessels of Hugin are those with extraordinary intellect, critical thinking, and cognitive flexibility. They value knowledge and the pursuit of truth above all else. Thus, the Raven Aegis often finds itself in the possession of scholars, scientists, and investigators. They strive to uncover the mysteries of the world and gain a better understanding of the unknown. Many bring about groundbreaking discoveries and innovations that have changed the world, for better or for worse, though occasionally their single-minded pursuit of knowledge and truth blinds them to the morality of what it takes to achieve it. Thus, Raven Aegis users are blessed with the thinking speed of a supercomputer, processing elaborate strings of information and multiple lines of thought at once within a fraction of a second. This processing speed allows them to seemingly slow down time when they analyze their surroundings and contemplate their next course of action. 
Wielders with particularly keen intellect will also gain photographic memory. However, most will develop raven-like traits such as black feathers, wings, and the ability to perfectly mimic any human voice. The Raven Aegis grants its wielders a special power called vision, which allows them to see a second or two into their own future, and giving them the opportunity to anticipate, plan, and react inhumanly fast. However, while they are using this power, it also renders them completely blind, forcing them to rely on their other senses and memory of the terrain. To activate this Aegis, its wielder must call out, part the veil, and to deactivate, they must say, Curtain Falls. Next, we have the Cat Aegis. It is a cat's eye moonstone which is embedded into a choker necklace. It's inhabited by Phallus, the embodiment of wonder. She embodies a living being's sense of curiosity and desire to conquer the unknown. She is represented by the cat, an animal known for its curiosity and individualistic nature. They are a symbol of independence and adventure, possessing a strong desire to explore the world around them, and are even considered as symbols of mystery and the occult. The souls of Phallus are known for their wanderlust and daring spirit. They want to follow the path less traveled and discover sights few others will ever see. They have a desire to forge into the unknown, chase thrills and refuse to allow long odds or uncertain fortune to slow them down. However, vessels of Phallus are incredibly secretive and flighty individuals, often living a double life and never staying in one place for long. Thus, many of Phallus' chosen vessels have been explorers, secret intelligence, and journalists. Many have pioneered the discovery of previously unknown lands and animals, accomplished feats previously thought impossible, and uncovered deep-rooted conspiracies. However, it is the curse of the Cat Aegis to walk a path of solitude, until the day the secrets they have guarded swallows them whole. In their transformed states, Cat Aegis wielders gain agility, dexterity, and reaction speed that is superior to other Aegis users, as well as unique traits such as the ability to see in pitch black darkness and nine lives. These nine lives are a culmination of a feline's riding reflex and the wielder's increased dexterity and agility, which allows them to pull off near impossible feats of athleticism or escape from life-threatening situations unharmed. They may also develop cat-like features such as claws, fangs, cat ears, tail, and eyes. The special power of the cat Aegis is dubbed Daydream, which traps the targets who have direct line of sight of her in a daze. In this stupor, they witness visions of their greatest desires, sweeping them away in their ideal lives. However, this trance is easily broken if their bodies are disturbed or if the affected persons manage to recognize that they are in a trance and reject it. Additionally, those who have previously been affected by this power will become more difficult to affect. This Aegis' activation phrase is Bewitch, and her deactivation phrase is Disenchant. Now let's move on to the Wolf Aegis. This Aegis is a brown onyx embedded into a fingerless glove. It is inhabited by Villar, the Sentinel of Protection. Villar embodies the natural instinct in all creatures to provide shelter and safety to those they care for, be it for the sake of survival, genuine affection, or both. He is represented by the wolf, a symbol of guardianship and loyalty. They are pack animals that develop deep emotional bonds to each other, forming the foundation of loyalty and dedication that compels them to protect each other from harm. Vessels of Villar are often self-sacrificing, with a strong sense of belonging and a stronger urge to protect those they consider home. Thus, the Aegis often finds affinity with people in roles of protection, such as parental guardians, firefighters, search and rescue, and law enforcement. However, when taken too far, this desire to protect has led to delusions of ownership and entitlement, exerting absolute control and isolation over those they wish to protect, and stopping at nothing to ensure their safety even if it means decimating anything and everything they consider a threat. When transformed, wielders of the wolf Aegis develop a keen sense of smell that is superior to other Aegis wielders. They also possess greater armor strength that allows them to absorb only a fraction of damage other Aegis wielders would sustain. Wolf-like features such as fangs, ears, tails, and claws are also common among the transformed states of wolf Aegis wielders. 
The wolf Aegis possesses a special power called Lycan's Rage, which increases its wielder's strength the greater their anger or determination grows to protect or eliminate a threat. Any damage received while this power is active also increases their strength. However, the stronger they become, the more difficult it is to control their power and the sooner they become exhausted and need to de-transform. To activate the wolf Aegis, its wielder must call out Howl Havoc and Silence Reigns to deactivate. Up next is the Snake Aegis. This Aegis is a piece of color-shifting alexandrite embedded into a serpent-shaped bangle and is inhabited by Naga, the Sentinel of Change. As the Sentinel of Change, she is the embodiment of a living creature's innate ability and instinctive desire to adapt to its environment in order to survive. She is represented by the snake, a polarizing creature that is both feared and admired, much like change itself. It is considered as a symbol of evil, dark magic, and temptation, but at the same time, it is also revered as a symbol of medicine, fertility, and rebirth. As such, vessels of Naga are usually introspective, resilient, and adaptable, ever-changing and always striving for improvement and self-betterment. They are determined to overcome barriers and help others to do the same, rarely losing heart in the face of an obstacle, instead seeing it as a challenge to be overcome. Thus, many of Naga's vessels are those in the position of guidance, care, or progress, often being involved in healthcare, invention, the sciences, and educators. But when misplaced, this ability to overcome obstacles often lead the Snake Aegis wielder to cross boundaries that were put in place for the safety and protection of all. Sometimes, the fact that they can is more important than whether they should. When transformed, wielders of the Snake Aegis also develop snake-like traits such as thermal sense, fangs, scales, as well as superior flexibility to other Aegis wielders. The Snake Aegis grants its wielder a unique power dubbed Devour, which allows them to absorb the energy of their opponent's attacks and stockpile it into one extremely powerful attack or use it to recharge themselves to remain transformed for longer and heal injuries though there is a limit to the amount of force that can be absorbed. To activate the Snake Aegis, wielders must use the phrase Jaws Open, and its deactivation phrase is Brewmate. This next Aegis is one I have touched on briefly and played a significant role in the fate of all the Aegis. That's right, the Stag Aegis. This Aegis is a Malachite that is embedded in a ring mimicking the shape of a deer's antlers. It is inhabited by Cernunnos, the Sentinel of Harmony. Cernunnos is partly based off of a Gallo-Roman deity of the same name who is also associated with the Horned God in Wicca. As the Sentinel of Harmony, Cernunnos embodies the importance of balance and coexistence for all living creatures to fulfill their roles and maintain the natural order for the survival of all. He is represented by the stag, often labeled by many cultures as the lord of the forest, and as the lord of the forest, it falls to him to maintain balance and harmony across his kingdom. Thus, vessels of Cernunnos are those with a strong moral compass and sense of justice. They will fight for the prosperity of all living creatures, human or animal. Many go on to pioneer civil rights movements to abolish the cruelty and mistreatment of all living beings. They have a strong sense of community and connection to their surroundings. Thus, the Stag Aegis has often been wielded by conservationists, activists, and humanitarian workers. However, occasionally the wielders of this Aegis may become consumed by their righteousness and concept of justice that they fail to recognize the needs and desires of those they are fighting for, often projecting their own ideals and corrupting their cause. Due to their strong connection to nature, and every living creature, Stag Aegis wielders also gain the ability to communicate with any animal they come across when they are transformed. All Stag Aegis wielders will also develop antlers. The Stag Aegis also possesses a unique power dubbed Metamorphosis, which allows its users to transform into any animal that they have anatomical and physiological understanding of. As long as this power is active, they are able to freely change between different animals. However, the longer this power is activated, the more energy they use to remain transformed. 
To activate this aegis, its wielders must use the phrase, the hunt begins, and deactivate it using the phrase, the hunt ends. And last but not least, we have the tiger aegis. The tiger aegis is a red tiger's eye embedded in a belt. It is inhabited by Maung, the sentinel of strength. Strength is integral to any creature's survival. It determines who eats, who starves, who continues their bloodline, and who succumbs to natural selection. The tiger is a symbol of strength and power that is revered for its grace and beauty in many cultures, and many more attempt to evoke its strength and courage in the face of adversity. Therefore, vessels of Maung are individuals with extraordinary strength and will who command admiration and respect among their community. They do not falter in the face of a challenge and will march on until they claim victory. They are fierce and determined, and once they have set their mind on a goal, they will not rest until they have achieved it. Thus, the Tiger Aegis often finds itself in the possession of leaders, soldiers, and mercenaries, individuals who are willing to lay their lives on the line for the sake of achieving their goals. However, oftentimes wielders of this Aegis will not fret about the morality of their goals, so long as they achieve it. When transformed, Tiger Aegis wielders develop physical strength that is superior to other Aegis wielders. Wielders may also develop tiger-like features such as tiger ears, tail, claws, fangs, and striping on their bodies. The Tiger Aegis's unique power is dubbed Killing Intent, which spreads an aura of intimidation to those in their vicinity, activating the flight portion of their fight or flight response, which causes their opponents to hesitate, retreat, or freeze in place. This power affects those within a 20 meter radius regardless of whether they are able to see or hear them. This aura also affects allies and may require the user to exert themselves to affect individuals with nerves of steel. However, the longer it is activated, the shorter the time the wielder is able to remain transformed. The activation phrase used for this aegis is go for the kill, and its deactivation phrase is hunger slaked. Those are all the Aegises in Wild Word. Let me know which Aegis you think you would be compatible with. I'll definitely be doing more on my Wild Word series and if you want exclusive sneak peeks on the design and story as well as early access to my videos, please join my Patreon. I'll be making videos of the main cast and a brief summary of what they're about pretty soon and after that I'm going to be posting videos about how the story unfolds so be sure to stay tuned for that. But don't worry because I am still doing my usual miraculous redesign and rewrite videos and I might even expand to other shows that I enjoyed growing up. If you like my content, please follow me on all my social media, join my discord server, check out my comic because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!